In this video, we will explain energy in special relativity. Before we start, let's recall some important quantities. The four velocity u mu is defined as the derivative of x mu with respect to proper time. By using this four velocity, we can define the four momentum p mu and then the four force k mu. Let us now start by investigating the inner product of k mu and u mu. On the one hand, by using the definition of 4 velocity, this yields gamma times c k0 minus the inner product of k and v. Since the spatial components of k mu are equal to gamma times the 3 force f, we can write this as gamma times the inner product of f with v. On the other hand, the 4 force k mu is equal to mass times b mu, the 4 acceleration, if we assume a time independent mass. And since 4 acceleration and 4 velocity are always perpendicular to each other, this yields zero. Therefore, also the above expression must vanish. This helps us to determine k0, which is given by gamma over c times the inner product of f with v. Velocity is dx over dt, which makes it possible to combine the force and dx to the infinitesimal work dw. This dw is the work that is performed by applying f along the distance dx. The last step is to combine gamma and the time derivative to get the derivative with respect to proper time tau. Since the 4 force k mu is defined as the derivative of 4 momentum with respect to tau, we now have two expressions for k0. As they must be the same, we can express w as cp0, so that we can interpret the zero component of 4 momentum as an energy. The physical interpretation is as follows. If you take a particle at rest, apply a force and thereby accelerate it, the quantity cp0 changes by the amount of work that was performed by applying the force. We can now define the relativistic energy of a particle as cp0, which is equal to gamma m c squared and also to the square root of p squared c squared plus m squared c to the power of 4. For more information on the 4 momentum, check out our previous video. As a side note, if you define a relativistic mass as gamma times m, then the energy is given by Einstein's famous E equals mc squared. However, such a velocity-dependent relativistic mass is not really used nowadays. Instead, we just use m and always mean the Lorentz invariant rest mass. To conclude this video, let us investigate three special cases of a particle's energy. If we consider massless particles, then the energy is simply proportional to momentum. In the non-relativistic limit, which means that the particle has mass and is slow, we can write the square root like this and perform a Taylor expansion, since the ratio of momentum over mass is very small. A very useful Taylor expansion to remember is 1 plus x to the power of n, which is 1 plus nx for small values of x. Therefore, we can write the energy as mc squared, the rest energy, plus p squared over 2m, the classic kinetic energy, plus further relativistic corrections. For instance, the first correction is minus p to the power of 4 over 8m cubed c squared. In the so-called ultra-relativistic limit, where the particle is massive but really fast, we can write the square root like this. Now, the ratio of mass over momentum is a small quantity and we can do a similar Taylor expansion. The resulting leading order term is Pc, which looks like the energy of a massless particle. However, it is not completely like a massless particle since we do have correction terms. But the thing to remember is that ultra-relativistic particles have energies similar to massless particles. And that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching!